Hi, everyone, and welcome to Pay Dirt, a Penn State football show. Sitting in for Tom Hannafin, I'm Brian McLaughlin, and of course, I'm joined by former Penn State and NFL quarterback Matt McGloin. Before we get to Matt, a few words from our friends at Funk Brewing. This show, of course, is brought to you by all of our sponsors, and especially Funk Brewing, the official craft beer partner of Pay Dirt. We're big fans of Funk's Citrus IPA and Silent Disco IPA, but don't forget our official beer, the Pay Dirt IPA. It's available in Funk's Taste rooms as well as beer distributors and grocery stores right now. Funk has so many great beers to choose from at their tap rooms in Emmis, Elizabethtown, and York in Pennsylvania. You can find a variety of Funk Brewing beers at your favorite beer distributor and grocery store. Visit www.funk-brewing.com to learn where and how you can get their fantastic products. Must be 21 years or older to purchase. Please drink responsibly. Also, Pay Dirt is brought to you by our partners at Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, the NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting to props and futures. Head to betonline.ag today or use your mobile device to join and place your first bet. Use our promo code BLEAV50. That's BLEAV50. B-L-E-A-V-50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. That's a sponsor for Payton. Also, we invite you to head to shop.believe.com. That's shop.believe.com and search Payton for our two shirts. One has the official show logo over the heart. It comes in white, navy, blue, and black. And the other is a navy blue t-shirt. It has the pay dirt word mark over the heart and on the back, circa the 2012 Penn State football season. It has Matt McGloin's name and number. It's very fitting as this season of Nittany Lion football marks the 10-year anniversary of that team. Again, head to shop.believe.com. That's shop.believe.com and search Pager for our two shorts for our two shirts. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in on ESPN Radio State College, as well as checking out the podcast version of the show presented by the Believe Network, which is available now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, hit us up on Twitter and let us know what you think of the show at ESPN Radio 1037 and at McGloin QB11 and at Tom Hannafin. I'm Brian McLaughlin, again, filling in for Tom this week. Now, so excited to welcome in former Penn State quarterback back Matt McGloin. Matt, a Penn State win at the end of the day against Northwestern. How are you that's feeling it. after that one? Yeah, that's it. That's all that matters is the Penn State win, right? In a game like that, in a tough environment where it's raining, mud on the field where it's slippery, right? You really need to dial in, Brian. You really need to focus. You have to really pay attention you know, to those conditions. And uh, look, at the end of the day, in a game like that, the most important thing is coming out with a victory. And like, I, as I'm watching this game, I'm thinking to myself, if this was anybody but Northwestern, does Penn State lose that game? Right? You know, th- that's just, it's how messy of a game that was. And I understand the conditions, but that is a game, Brian, where experience takes over, right? And we saw the turnovers offensively. We saw some mistakes defensively for some younger players, but that is a game where experience plays a big factor. Um, but Penn State's fortunate to get out, you know, that game with the victory today. I'm totally with you. Um, the turnovers, not pretty. Um, the weather, not pretty. Um, but to me, the Penn State defense is the group that won the mm-hmm. game. Um, they were able to force some turnovers as well. And I, I was curious to hear your thoughts on the weather overall and how that impacted the Penn State offense. And it, I think it did have some impact on the turnovers. But just how difficult is it for you to find your normal normal rhythm yeah. as an offense when, when the weather's just so ugly like that and can really, I feel like, has to just throw everybody off? One of the things I was taught Brian, I was taught this by Bill O'Brien. And when, when, when you're playing quarterback and it's raining out, like 
no, you know it's raining out. Everybody knows it's raining out, obviously. So it's one of those things where you think to yourself, like, all right, I, I have to over grip the football. I have to have a tighter grip on it. That's not true. Hmm. Right. You still want to keep. And, and for those of you who are able to watch the podcast, like envision yourself holding a football, Brian, like you still have that crease in your hand, that little gap in your hand. when You, you still want to keep that. Right. Mm-hmm. You, you, you don't want to over grip it. That's when the ball tends to float on your hands. That's when the ball tends to slip out of your hands. I thought I think we saw that a few times from Sean Clifford today, over gripping, over throwing, missing throws. Now, it, some of the throws and mistakes that he made was just bad reads and bad co- and not understanding coverage there. But as well, but it, it's one of those things where you, you think you have to kind of over protect the football as a quarterback and as a thrower of the football, and, and you don't necessarily have to. know. I think as a running back, and we 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 saw multiple fumbles today from 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 you know, Nick Singleton, Katron, Kevon Lee. Everybody fumbled today. You know, at the running back position, you have to be cautious when one guy, two guys, three guys are coming at you when running the football, two hands on the football. I don't think we saw that today. Um, You know, it it, it was just a tough game for this offense. But again, very fortunate and very lucky that they they got out of that game with a win. Yeah, I don't think Northwestern came in and necessarily impressed either. Um, They certainly made their own fair share of mistakes. The defense was able to take advantage of those. Final thought on on Sean Clifford, or at least just one more thought I had while watching. I'm on Twitter. I'm seeing people calling for Drew Aller, looking for an offensive spark. But back to your point on experience, I thought in the second half, there were a couple plays where I said, just be safe. Just be safe with it. And Sean did throw the ball away in those spots. I I thought in the second half, he kind of was able to just control the game enough, knowing you're playing with the lead. And, And even though... Felt like the offense didn't have it today. Sean wasn't in a rhythm. The running backs were struggling to take care of the ball. It didn't feel like the right spot for Aller today. You know, I think it's one of those games where, and you said it perfectly, control the game. That's all you had to do. Take care of the football, right? Find completions. Be safe with the ball. It's not a game, Brian, where you need to push the football down the field time and time again. You don't have to do that against a team like Northwestern, who we know is struggling coming into today's game at one and three. It's a game where completions win you the football game. Being safe with the ball, throwing hitch routes, throwing slants, throwing screens, throwing flat routes, right? Understanding, yeah, it's raining. It's tough to throw it. It's tough to catch the football, right? You, uh, uh, we, we talked about this on the preview episode, about having a balanced attack, having a smaller game plan that you may have had you know, against Purdue or against Auburn. But in that game plan is some of the better plays that you've run throughout the season and throughout training camp, some of the plays that you're better at. Where you don't need to think, just go out and play. It's simple stuff. It's it, there are plays where you can get completions, right? That's the game plan that Penn State should have had today. Um, you know, I, I just I, I don't think we saw that again. You know, Sean didn't play bad, but it was it, it was one of those games where there were a few dangerous throws. You know, he was put in some very difficult positions, and and like you know, I I, I look at a third down they had. Where he's throwing a field hitch with five like five minutes left in the third quarter. That's just that that that's not a good play to call in that situation in that moment and in those conditions. Um, you know, there there, there was a th- there was a third and six where with uh he tries to throw to Parker Washington. It, it's his feet aren't in position, you know, they're they're kind of they're kind of flat, his his chest is kind of facing the line of scrimmage. It's that back foot floater throw we've seen. Now we've seen him make that throw again, but you know, and he has made it, but in conditions like they were today, that's an extremely difficult throw to make. It's a tough completion to get. So, you know, there were a few spots today where they, they were just in tough, tough positions there. You know, I, I think a more basic approach would have benefited this offense, um, you know, today. But again, you know, Brian, we go back to it's a victory. It's a win. And at the yeah. end of the day, it's the most important thing. Penn State's 5-0 and heading into the bye week. Yeah. It's back-to-back games where it felt underwhelming in ways, but still two wins. You win against Central Michigan. You win against Northwestern. If you had told, I think, both of us at the beginning of the year, Matt, you're 5-0 and going into the bye week against Michigan, feeling pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, no doubt, right? And again, 
L- look at what Purdue did today. They beat a, they beat a four and Minnesota team. That's a yep. good football team. And I've talked about it time and time again. And I know, you know, uh, you know, people that probably listen to this show are tired of hearing me talk about Purdue, but that's a good football team. That's not a team you're going to want to play, you know, mm-hmm. late in October or even in November. I mean, they beat them. Yep. They beat a four and Minnesota football team today. I think as Penn State as a Penn State fans, uh, as Penn State analysts. I think coaches and players may agree as well that Penn State's lucky they got Purdue in week one. Yeah. Right. That's a team that's going to continue to get better. And that's a team that's going to make a push in the West. They really are. Um, And even Auburn, we know it's a down year for Auburn, but Penn State plays them early in the season, gets a tough win on the road. And that's something that winning on the road at Purdue, winning on the road at Auburn, that's something that stays with this Penn State football program throughout the rest of the year because they have experience now. They know what it's like to go into tough environments and win football games. Um, But man, Brian, to be 5-0 and heading into the bye week, I I cannot tell you the amount of confidence that that gives you as a coach and as a player, knowing that like you, you, you hold the keys now, like you, you mm. understand, like we control where we go from here and mm. heading into Ann Arbor two weeks from now, it's going to be game day. It has to be game day, right? Has to, right? I mean, yeah. w- what a terrific atmosphere, what a terrific environment that'll be for college football. But listen, I'll be the first to say I'm, I'm impressed with this team. I was wrong. Uh, I, I thought, look, I thought they, they were going to beat by Purdue week one. I really did. Um, but th- this is a good football team. They've done everything they've had to do to get to 5-0. Yeah. and oh. And I think that's the most important thing. I think that's the most important thing you take away from what they've done over the first five weeks of the season is that through the ups and downs, this team has stuck together. They found ways to win. Mike Yurcich, Manny Diaz have done an incredible job offensively and defensively of keeping this team together, scratching and clawing and finding ways to win football games. I, I, I tell you what, I think we got to get you on the phone with Purdue. You might be leading that bandwagon across the country with how good the Boilermakers are. <laughs> since the spring. Are. I've been I, talking about Purdue since <laughs> the spring, Brian. But they are looking like the best win of the five right now, which is, I think, a little bit surprising to many people coming into the year. A lot of people obviously expected the Auburn game to be tough, and a lot of people did have this one against Northwestern circled as a possible look-ahead spot. I want to talk a little bit about the Penn State defense today, because while the offense struggled, it just seemed like the defense had all the answers. Manny Diaz got as much airtime as anybody else with his celebrations on the sideline, and I think deservedly so. The defense just kind of went to work. No other. It was just kind of a normal week in the office for the defense. They got their big turnovers. They bent at times, but they held in the red zone. That fourth and goal stop late in the, I believe yeah. it was either early in the fourth quarter or late in the third. That's a massive stop. If Northwestern scores and gets within three, it's a whole different looking fourth quarter to me. So I, I think the defense might go a little bit under talked about because of the offensive struggles today, but I was once again, very impressed with Manny Diaz in the defense. Well, it's not talked about because it's expected, right? You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where it's like offensive struggling. It's fine. Defense is going to be fine. That, and that, that's that, that's the Penn state mentality. We know defense is going to show up time and time again. That depth is going to continue to get better and better. Mustafer, Showed up. He started playing he was well big today. Yeah, he made a few good plays, which which is great to see. You know, Abdul Carter is legit. Let's you know the talent's there. Everything is there. But I talked about experience earlier. Obviously, had his struggles and well at coverage. Great call by Northwestern. You know, on that play, Tarburton's getting better week in and week out. Nick Tarburton is getting better. It's 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 a good thing to see. And I talk about this a lot, Brian, about this defensive side of the ball. There's so much depth from the D-line linebackers, uh, secondary, that it's like you have no choice but to step up and play week in and week out. Otherwise, you're you're going to lose playing time. Yeah. Right? You're competing in a way with your own team, which I think is a positive thing. I think I think competition right. needs to be healthy. There's healthy, there's, there, healthy competition is a good thing, and we're seeing that from this defense week in and week out because they get so many guys in the football game. Um, week in and week out. But, and how about Jair Brown? 
I mean, just what, special, special. He's gonna be he's gonna be one of the top safeties taken in the draft this spring. What a player! Just knows how to find the football. Just has that veteran presence. You know, you know what I mean. Like every yeah. time I feel like the camera is on the defense, he's in the screen. <laughs> right? I mean, You're right. I, that that's just the type of player he is. What a special player he is. It's just, I mean, that is going to be so important. You know, moving forward, or, or guys like guys like Jair Brown, guys like PJ Mustafer, guys like Nick Tarbert, and continuing to develop. Now, look, um, you know, Wilson continue. He, he's going to if he's going to play. More and more reps week in and week out. He's got to continue to get better. We talked in weeks past about guys like Daquan Hardy getting better or Johnny Dixon getting better, and they have continued to get better, yeah. right? But that's what Manny Diaz has done, and that's what he's done so well is he's found this system, Brian, of like mixing guys in in certain moments, in certain situations where now you're playing to their strengths, like in these moments in games. And yep. it's it's really impressive. Um, but you're right. I, I don't think anybody's got more screen time than Manny Diaz did today. <laughs> today in particular. I, I He's on kind of one of those hot stretches where it feels like whatever button he pushes on defense, kind of like a manager in baseball, whatever pinch hitter they send up just gets a hit. Yep. Right now, whoever Manny's putting in the game, getting a sack, making a big tackle, making a play on the ball, he's pushing all the right buttons. And I tell you what, Matt, I loved when – this uh, the initial announcement came in this offseason that when they brought in Manny Diaz, I, I loved it because it was a guy who could replace Brent Pry, obviously somebody really tough to replace, but James was able to go out and get somebody who had equal experiences to Coach Pry. They talked about it on the broadcast today. Dan Orlovsky made a good shout out about just how that everywhere Manny Diaz has gone in his career, his first year, the defense has gotten better yeah. even, which is really a testament to Manny Diaz. I told some friends at the time of that hiring, it kind of felt like a move that I'm not saying it's something that Nick Saban would have done, but something that Alabama does bringing in a really experienced former head coach, slotting them in at coordinator, kind of helping prepare Diaz for wherever Manny goes next. Cause I don't think we can expect Manny Diaz to be Penn state's defensive coordinator for forever, but in both the short term and the long term for Penn state, it made sense. We saw that pay off today. I think it's going to continue to pay off as this defense keeps growing for all those reasons you talked about with him the ability to use some youngsters. You know, I think it's one of those things too, Brian, where you look at it and it's like you, you, when you hire a guy like Manny Diaz, your concern is that it's like, well, how fast is this guy going to be able to implement his defense and implement his style of play? Yeah. Right. He had a guy like Pry who did a fantastic job over a number of years with James, not just as a defensive coordinator, but as a linebacker coach. Yeah. Right. I, I think that gets lost sometimes. Right. And now the job Manny has done stepping forward, not just the defense, but a linebacking core that, let's be honest, has been limited. Yeah. But I think yeah. week in and week out now, you're seeing that group grow stronger, stronger, and stronger. And early in the year, he's, he's done a great job of kind of building strength around it. And I don't want to say hide that position group because that's not a fair, uh, a fair thing to say, but, but almost you know, help some weaknesses in that area. You know, Brian, if that if that's if that's the right thing to say, but now we're seeing that linebacking group get stronger and stronger week in and week out. I mean, he's done a really good job. I mean, this isn't turn like they're turning into not just one of the better secondaries in America, but I think one of the better defenses in America as well as the season goes on. You look ahead now to Michigan. Ohio State's coming up soon. Minnesota, they lost today, but they were a ranked team this week. Those are the next three games on the schedule. <laughs> to me, after today's performance, the defense is the group we're relying on. That yeah. is the group that is, while the offense has been good in moments, Auburn in particular, they showed flashes late against Purdue. Sean Clifford was clinical. But this is a defensive first group, which I don't think many necessarily expected coming into this year with so many returners on the offensive end outside of Jahan Dotson. Yeah, you know, and now they're fortunate that they have two weeks to prepare for Michigan. It's a good, it's a good, that? Michigan is a good football team. And now that three game stretch, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio State, doesn't look so terrible anymore after what we saw it happen today against, against Purdue for Minnesota. So, right. you know, again, they hold the keys 
they're going to control where they go from here. I think they've got a very good chance against a team like Mission to go in Ann Arbor in that atmosphere and play football. And it's because of the strength of that defense. You mentioned that drive by Sean Clifford against Purdue. I'm telling you right now, that's something that's going to win them the game as this season goes on. You, people yeah. are going to talk about Sean and his performances. We talk about Sean's performances on this show, right? How he struggles at times, how sometimes it's up and down, how it's inconsistent at times, but he's made big throws. He's won big games. He's put big drives together for this offense when they needed him too. There's going to come a time and people are calling for LR. You know, I, it's funny because we talked about this on the last episode. That And I didn't hear this. I was working for Big Ten Network on the sideline. I had two earpieces in, so I didn't hear it from the crowd. But they were chanting, we want Alar, we want Alar, we want Alar. And it's like Sean Clifford gives you the best opportunity to win football games right now. He's going to win a game for you as this season goes on. And maybe against Michigan, maybe against Minnesota. Who knows? Maybe against Ohio State, right? But yeah. you know, it, it's as much as the defense controls where this team goes from here out, this offense and Sean Clifford, they're going to have to, at some point in time, put a drive together, put a series together, put a quarter together, the way they did against a team like Purdue. Are you a fan of rivalries? Are you a fan of smack talk? Do you like to stand out from the crowd at tailgates? If so, head over to Smack Apparel and check out what their team is geared up for this football season. Their Let There Be White tee is the perfect gear for those famous whiteout games at Beaver Stadium. Or get straight to the point with the worst tee for all the Ohio State haters out there. Smack Apparel makes the gear that'll have everyone asking where you got it. They have the must-have tees for all your teams, including pro football, baseball, basketball every fan is covered head over to their website smackapparel.com and use the promo code paydirt at checkout for 10 percent off again that's smackapparel.com promo code paydirt at checkout why wear boring when you can wear smack are you looking for undeniably good hair and beard care? Then Maestro's Classic is perfect for you. Maestro's has beard washes, beard oils, beard butters, plus hair gels and pomades. It's one brand for every man. Visit maestrosclassic.com. That's M-A-E-S-T-R-O-S classic.com and use our promo code paydirt 15 Hader15 at checkout for 15% off your order. Maestro's Classic, crafting a better you. That that makes me ask this question to you, Matt, because your guy, obviously so experienced, played at a variety of levels in your career, a variety of situations. Sean Clifford, a very experienced guy, but he's hearing some of that too. And he sees Drew Aller every day in practice. Could any of this be could, could Sean be hearing a little bit of that noise? Is that something that might be affecting him at all? I, I'm asking as somebody who's never been in that arena, do you hear any of that when when they're calling for the the five star kid behind you? You know, that's a that, yeah, that's a, that's a good question, and it's a tough question because, like, you know, as a quarterback, when you're the starter, like, it, it's what it comes down to is is that communicated by the coaches? Mm. Right? Do you know what I'm saying? Is yep. the offensive coordinator saying, "Look, Sean's our guy," yeah, or James Franklin saying, "Sean's our guy," and that's it. Through the ups and downs, Sean's going to be our guy. Does the team have your back? Does the team support you? Does everybody know that Brian? Is it understood that he's the guy, so that it gets to a point where you would just ignore the noise? And you don't care what people are writing about. You don't care what people are saying. You don't care what people are cheering. I've been in both spots, man. Right? I've been, I've been the backup. I've been the starter. People have said, we want McGloin. People have also said, bench that guy. Right? So, <laughs> I've been in both spots. They're both difficult positions to be in. Right. But if mentally you can put yourself in a position where all that matters is the opinion of your teammates, the opinion of your coaches, right? the guys in that quarterback room and everybody knows that, listen, you're the guy. We're going to go as far as you can take us. We support you. We have your back. We're here for you. That's all that matters, man. That, 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 that's what makes you play extremely well week in and week out. That's what makes you show up day in and day out. It's the support from your coaches and teammates. And as long as he has that, they've got a chance. 
And, and just to wrap up the offensive questions then, should I be worried about today's fumble issues with the running backs? Two lost fumbles for Nick Singleton, yeah. one each for Kevon Lee and Katron Allen. It, it, should I be worried? That's an experience thing. And it's because of the weather, right? It, yeah. it, it, there, 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 there's, there's an experience when, when it comes to running the football, understanding the conditions, understanding how to hold on to the football, understanding that, listen, for how great you are as a freshman, for how you know well you've done, throughout the first four weeks of the season, this is a big 10. Rain, sleet, snow, ice. Any fro- of it. All of the frozen, above. We're getting a big wind game at some point. Frozen grass. Whatever yeah. it may be, man, you got to carry it in all. It doesn't matter. All conditions. You need to be able to carry it and run the football. And I think these guys understood that today. Right. You know, and, and again, the deeper you get into Big Ten play, guys are going to tackle you. They're going to go after the football. They know too what the weather's like. Right. So I think I think this was a good lesson. It was a tough lesson to learn today, Brian. Yeah. But let's I, hope I, I, if that message gets across here this week. I tell you what, I James Franklin was as frustrated yeah. as I've ever seen him on the sideline yeah. today with with those issues. So I think they're gonna hear it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they go back. I remember uh, when I was at Penn State, Galen Hall Okay, uh, used to have, like, they used to wrap. Um, you, ever, you ever see, like, those head covers that, you know, used to wear on helmets that, you know, first team, second team, offense, defense, things sure. like that? They used to wrap footballs in those. It makes the football a lot slicker. <laughs> they, they, okay. The running backs would carry those in individual drills and things like that. So I don't know if they do that or not, but if they don't, bring those back. I'm sure I'm sure Coach Sider and the, the running back room have something cooked up for the, the next two weeks before Michigan, which which brings us brings us back to that point of you you mentioned they've got the keys in hand right now. Yeah. Two weeks before Michigan. What's the feeling like in the locker room? Just one an ugly one, but knowing we've got two weeks to prepare for one of those probably two or three games that we circled on our schedule preseason. You know what's crazy is that they've been able to experience things throughout the first five weeks of the season that you experience throughout 12 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that, It's an old team already in that you know sense. It's a great point. Like, you know yeah, what absolutely. Like, and look what they did week one against Purdue. They they scored twice before, uh, before the first half ended. They put a drive together to win a football game. They go on the road and Auburn in a tough environment and just dominate. Mm-hmm. Right? And then they get a tough condition football game at home against a, as an always well coached football team in Northwestern and a team that, that did really have it. They have a chance. They had a chance for had sure. a chance today, but they were able to pull that game out. Like they've experienced so much throughout the first five weeks of the season that throughout this bye week you kind of just look back and it's like, well, I, you know, I, I'm not sure what's next, but we've gone through a lot. And one thing I do know is that anything that comes our way, anything that we face, we can attack and we can overcome. Right, and I think this is a great week for Penn State now to self-evaluate, to go back throughout the first five weeks of the season. What have we done well? What haven't we done well? Right. What are the things that we need to just say? All right, that's gone. That play's gone. That's out. We we're that that we're just not good at it right now. It hasn't worked for us. That's out of the playbook. But what are those plays now where it's like, th- th- these are really good plays for us. We've been successful at running the football here. We've been successful throwing the ball. This concept has been great for us, right? Let's implement that more into our game plans moving forward. Now, a lot of the stuff, I talk a lot about 2012 um, and, and that Penn State team we had because a lot of those concepts and stuff like that, Brian, we had, they were all, that was all the same stuff. But what we did so well was we added dressing, shifts, motions, adjustments, things like that to where it was like the defense is seeing different things. But like for me and these wide receivers, it was things we did so well. And that's why, you know, when we struggled earlier in the season, we dialed everything back and just started to run what we were good at. But we changed it up so it looked different for everybody else. I think as Penn State continues to move forward, like that's that's something they should take a look at, especially when you have to play – Uh, a Michigan or a Minnesota or Ohio state. What are we doing really well right now? How do we call that more? How do we run that more, but how do we make it look different against these, these really good defenses that we're going to have to play? I think in a similar vein to that, one of my next 
thoughts with, with what you just said is what what can I personally learn from today's game as a fan and somebody who watches this team every week? And what can the coaches and players yeah. take away? Because I have a feeling they're kind of two different things. I think that as a fan, similar to some of the players, I'm taking away, all right, great, experience in a tough game where you're not playing well, have to overcome some adversity. I think that's a good takeaway. On the other hand, I'm a little bit less confident than I was after the Auburn game in the, in the rushing attack due to some of those ball security things and just some of those overall takeaways with that running back room. Um, but I have to imagine it's a completely different set of takeaways from the coaching staff and what they're going to take away from just a, a mucky game where I'm sure it was completely different than it had it been a dry football game. My fear. Yeah, Brian, that's, that's a really good question. That's a really good point. You know, it's a really great way to look at it. My fear is that, you know, they have to get past the point of when you play a lesser opponent that's showing up is just good enough. You know what I'm saying? Like you get yep. up to the early lead against Central Michigan, you're up 14 nothing. you take your foot off the gas. Central Michigan is a good yep. football team. That's a good football program, right? They're going to win some games moving forward. They had a chance as well. Mm-hmm. Northwestern the same way. You show up, you start doing some good things. Next thing you know, you're turning the football over, you're fumbling it, you throw an interception. Should have been two interceptions. Should have. Right. Absolutely. But it's one of those things. I think the mindset is that we're just better than you. Or we're going to beat you. And like, that's, yeah, that's a great mindset to have, but you have to go out and prove it. And it's like, for me, when I look at a team like Ohio state, they're better than you. They know they're better than you, but they go out and they do it. They dominate yeah. for four quarters. That's the point you need to get to mentally as a team where it's like, we, 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 we know we're going to win this football game. Just go out, execute the game plan, do what we do, and we're going to be fine, and we're going to be win, and, and we're going to win. And at no point in time are we going to take our foot off the gas, right? Now, again, throughout the first five weeks of the season, I feel like they've got they've they, 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 they've been able to realize that. All right, whoa, like let's hang on a second. We've done really good things, but we've also struggled a lot as well. Mm. So, how do we fix this over the next seven days before we really start prepping for Michigan? Because we can't come out flat in Ann Arbor. We can't start slow. We can't take our foot off the gas. Or this team's going to beat us. Minnesota, yeah, they got beat today. But again, Purdue's a very good football team. That's a good offense. Minnesota's got a really good defense, right? They've got a good running game. They have a six-year quarterback as well. We can't come out slow. And then Ohio State's a different breed of cat. But you've got time to figure it out now. You have a bye week to, to, to kind of self-evaluate, figure out who you are, really start to find your identity, which I think they're starting to figure out. But just fix the small errors, fix the mental mistakes, right? Don't beat yourself. If you beat yourself against Michigan, Minnesota, or Ohio State, you're going to lose a football game. And that to me is where a lot of the value of Sean Clifford coming back for this year is to me. Now, he's probably not quite as talented as Drew Aller, but the ability to lead the locker room for me and having been through situations like this where your team's had hot starts and being able to make sure these young guys aren't reading those press clippings, making sure you've talked about this before, making sure the focus stays in the locker room. To me, that's where P.J. Mustafer, Sean Clifford, they're going to have as much an impact prior to the Michigan game over these next two weeks, maybe as much as they have during the Michigan game, making sure these guys are ready to go and being as prepared as possible over the next two weeks. To me, that's where the Sean Clifford effect can really, I don't know if it'll be seen or not, but to me, if I had to guess, that's where he really is as much as anything, yeah. why James has brought him back for this sixth year. Again, Brian, another great point, another great no, no, another great topic. And that's one of those things where you're going to Ann Arbor now, and it's like, I, I've already played there. Yeah, I've already been there. There's nothing new. So there Not is no deal. there's no walking out, looking around, saying, wow, this place is impressive. I've already been there. I've already won a football game there. So that's it. Now it's business. It's a business trip. You take all, all anything that is new, it, it, you take it all out, right? Yeah. And that's, again, that's an experience thing. It's a focus thing. These guys have been around the program for a long time. And when you have a leader like a Mustafer, you have a leader like a Clifford where the team rallies around these guys because, and here's the thing too, you're five and zero. Oh. Penn State Nation knows they're five and zero. Oh. Coaches know they're five and zero. Oh. You know you're five and zero, oh. mm-hmm. and it's one of those things where everybody's thinking it, but nobody wants to say it. 
right? Because you know you how oh, yeah. good you are. You know what's at stake. You know how important every week becomes. But it's the experienced guys who can say, yo, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's one week at a time, right? It's the bye week. Let's figure out who we are. Let's figure out what we've done wrong over the past five weeks. Let's fix them and correct them. So when we start Monday game week of Michigan, we're not doing that anymore. We're moving past that. And now we can just focus on Michigan, focus on being better, and focus on winning that football game. That's where experience comes into play, which they need right now more than ever. When you were a youngster, who was that guy on your first big road trip that calmed you down? Oh, great. Oh. Oh man, that's a good question. You know, gosh, man, like, you know, I had the opportunity to, you know, play on the road at, at Minnesota. My first, my first game in 2010. Um, you know, we had a collection of veterans, you know, on that team. Um, you know, the Brett Brackets, the Graham Zugs, the Derek Moyes, you know, guys yes. that have, guys that have just been, been in that moment before. So for me, it was kind of easy in a way because they knew what to expect from me as a quarterback and as a player. So when I got into that huddle, it was kind of all smiles, you know, it was like, all right, let's go. Maddie's get Maddie's getting a chance. Maddie's getting his opportunity, you know? So that awesome. was fun for me in a way, but then playing the next week, Michigan in the whiteout game. You know, I was definitely nervous, definitely excited to play, but it's my teammates that calm me down. Guys that have played in that atmosphere before, guys that have played in that moment before, and those are the guys that you lean on, right? Don't be stubborn to the point, Brian, where you don't ask questions, right? Hey, man, like, how loud is it going to be? You're like, that's just, you know what I mean? That, that, may be, that may be a ridiculous question, but like, how, how important do we need to communicate this week? Like, do I need to over communicate signals, things like that? Like, what, what can the cadence be like? Like how loud is it going to be on third down red zone? What, what, certain moments, situations in the game here. What, what are we going to be dealing with here? Like are, are these t- are these tough fans? Is this a tough crowd? What's it like? Like there, there's no such thing as a stupid question when you're playing at Michigan. Or you're playing at Ohio State. Or you're playing in tough environments. Ask yeah. the questions. Over communicate. Everybody needs to be on the same page. And if you're a young guy right now, Nick Singleton, Katron Allen, uh, you know, Abdul Carter, these are the guys that need to lean on the older players, the experienced players and say, Hey, uh, I know I've done some good things. You know, uh, we also know we've struggled at times, man. Like I just, uh, I need to get, I, I, I need to reset a little bit here so I can continue to move forward. That's where the experienced guys need to step up and help these younger players, um, and support these younger guys. I mean, Catron Allen and uh, and Nick Singleton both had 21 carries today. Just looking at the box score, so they got tons of experience. Yeah. Matt, it's a 17 to seven final score today. I know you and Tom are going to talk a lot over the next couple of weeks about the bye week, Michigan coming up. Overall, after today's game, did it change your opinion on this team at all going into that next stretch of really important games? You know, I I I, I don't think so. You know, look, we know how talented the team is. You know, th- this was it was a messy game today. Right, bad weather conditions, turnovers, um, things we haven't seen. You know, the first few weeks of the season. You know, I, I certainly think conditions played a big factor in this game. But for me, when I look at it, it's the same for both teams. It's raining for both teams. The field's muddy for both teams. The ball's wet yeah. for both teams. Too bad. Figure it out. That 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 that's the way it is, Brian. It's part of the game. It's part of playing in the Big Ten. That's what you signed up for. That 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 those are the games that I love, man. The snow games, yeah. the rain games, the sleet games, the ice games, the games that are freezing cold, the wind games. Those are the games I love, man. That's what makes the Big Ten great. So I agree. This was a tough lesson. They're fortunate they got out of there with a victory, but this was a tough lesson for these younger players. But in a way, I'm glad it happened. Because right. now they realize it, right? They've experienced the ups and downs thus far that the Big Ten brings to you as a student athlete. Such a funny spot to be in as a fan. I thought the same thing post game. I was like, all right, we got we got kind of a stinker out of the way. W still in the win column. I, I, I don't love overall a lot of what happened today, but I like the end result at as the clocks hit zero. You know, and I think that that's my over overarching reaction from today. Yeah. You know, what was fun for me was sitting on the couch, watching the game, not, not having to play in the pouring rain anymore. Right? 
I, that was my, I graduated two years ago, Matt. Today was the first time yeah. really since I graduated that I thought I, I was happy to be on my couch and not in the student section or in the press box at Beaver Stadium. I was very okay not being in state college today. No, yeah, no, it looked, yeah, it, it looked like it was a tough atmosphere for these players and for these coaches and, you know, for the fans as well. Uh, as much as I love that atmosphere, I love the Big Ten. I love that style of play, man. I had no problem sitting on the couch today watching the game. <laughs> Great to watch on TV. A real joy in many ways. Uh, there were outfit changes. I don't know. James changed his hat at halftime. I mean, it was it was just not a fun day to play football, I'd have to imagine. But in the end... Have we seen uh, him in a hat before? I don't... I, I'm sure at some point he has. I, I couldn't believe he made the switch at halftime, though. I, I caught on to that one right away. The little wardrobe change. He, he must have ran over to Medler Field because that was a Penn State baseball hat he had on in the second <laughs> half. It Fun was, game, yeah, it had the, yeah, yeah, it had the big S on it. Yeah, yeah. The big S for sure. Matt, any final thoughts as we wrap this one up from just an ugly game but the win? Look, 5-0. and all. That's all that matters. That's the most Simple. important thing right now. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, at the end of the day, what you've done well, uh, what you've struggled at. You're 5-0. and all. You've done everything you've had to do to win football games. Um, understand you need to continue to get better. You need to continue to improve because it's only going to get more and more difficult from here on out. And understand, Brian, that the farther you go in this Big Ten season, the more you continue to win games, that target on your back gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're going to get the best that these Big Ten teams have to offer week in and week out. Right now, right now is when it gets fun, man. It gets fun. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Well, this was a blast, Matt. I really appreciate you letting me jump on for Tom this week and co-hosting with you. Fun time, fun win for Penn State today. Michigan's coming up next. I'm sure you and Tom have lots of great content planned over the next few weeks, but uh, thanks again for letting me jump on with you. Absolutely, man. Enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll be back on ESPN Radio State College on Mondays and Fridays from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern for the remainder of the Penn State football season. If you want to check out the podcast version of this show presented by the Believe Network, this episode and our entire library of shows is available now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Tune in. Let me start again. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll be back on ESPN Radio State College on Mondays and Fridays from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern for the remainder of the Penn State football season. If you want to check out the podcast version of this show presented by the Believe Network, this episode and our entire library of shows is available now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, let us know what you think of the show on Twitter at ESPN Radio 1037 at McGloin QB11 and at Tom Hannafin. Pater is presented by Bet Online and by Funk Brewing. Thanks again, everyone, and join us next week for more Pater.